2024 Poppy Launch. It is once again wonderful to see Legion members, Poppy Appeal organisers, volunteers, supporters, friends and marvellous show of young people here today. Once again, the Pantom family have welcomed us so we can undertake this important event. But as you have been here regularly, you know what might be happening next. Well, I can assure you this year, it's different. And this is where I now go like this. And I know that my two parade marshals either side of me will also be doing that. But I have no fears, ladies and gentlemen, because they are all very, very well trained. So, we now need to complete the muster and fill the empty chairs that are on either side of me. So, those of you who are able, would you please stand? In Lincolnshire, we are very proud indeed of the wonderful professional duties undertaken by our branch standard bearers from all parts within our county. County Parade Marshal, march on the Royal British Legion standards. Once again, we are very pleased, and it is a privilege to always be on parade with us today, our association standards, from the National Aiden Association, the Normandy Veterans, the Merchant Navy Association, the Royal Army Medical Corps, the Royal Air Force Association, the Polish Air Force, the Royal Anglican Royal Lincolnshire Regiment. Parade Marshal, march on the associated standards.
you will have noticed with the association standards were the standards, the end signs of our cadet units. This is our future generation. Young people willing to take on the uniform of the Royal Navy cadets, the Army cadets and the Air cadets. Will you please make the cadets welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Trade Marshal, march on the cadets. term that's used in the Royal British Legion, meaning we haven't got them in the right place yet. <laughs> it's not like having a shuffle. And ladies and gentlemen, before we bring on the last standard, I would ask you to put your hands together and recognise the Riders Branch. So to complete our muster, ladies and gentlemen, this 
is a rather tearful part. Will you please welcome the National War Widows Association Standard. standing for one verse of a national anthem. Another difficult movement, ladies and gentlemen, when you're a standard bearer, trying to have eyes in the back of your head where your seat is. So now we are all together, I do have some sad news to share with you. Some of you will already know what I'm going to say. But we feel it is only correct and appropriate time to share it with you all today. Sadly, last Wednesday, our dear friend and colleague, Andy Downey, passed away. Following a short but serious illness, Andy was indeed a larger than life character with his smile and definitely a witty banter. He surely will be missed not by just his colleagues in the riders but across the whole of Lincolnshire County and across the whole country. I am sure all of you 
will hold in your thoughts his family and his friends. Rest in peace, Andy. So seriously, why have we all come here today? I know a lot of you come to see our lovely people on the stage and make sure that they're making them, you know, the right words and the right sayings. Or do you come because you want to see all the standards on parade? Or do you come because you just want to come and have a look at East Kirby? There's so many different reasons. But as we all now prepare for remembrance, services across the county, and the busy time that the Poppy Appeal organisers, volunteers will be undertaking. It is only right and correct to say a very, very, very big thank you to all of you here today and to those many who cannot be here. Because a lot haven't come today because they're already out on the streets collecting. In this world we live in, there are more and more charities reaching out for funds to cover many costs. The Legion now is one of many military charities seeking help. But as you know, the Royal British Legion is the custodian of remembrance and we make sure that remembrance will not be not forgotten. The Poppy Appeal funds, people question, where is the money really spent? Well, I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that it is spent on the veterans who have served our country. The veterans who are still serving our country. The veterans of our armed services, and on top of that, their families. Nobody wishes to say that they are a veteran or a beneficiary, but they should be proud that they are. Because if they didn't do what they were doing, or had done what they've done, we won't be here today. So, as I've already said, those funds would not happen if it was not for you who volunteer and sometimes not in the best of weather. I've seen people during Remembrance Tide stood on a market square when it's pouring down with rain. And when you say, why are you doing it? Their answer is quite simple. A lot of people gave their lives when it was raining. Surely I can get wet for an hour. But I will say to all of you who are poppy organisers or volunteers in whatever way, Whatever amount you take, every penny counts. And it doesn't matter if you don't beat last year's target. Without you doing what you are doing, our deserving beneficiaries would not get the help they need. So, this might sound a very strange thing to say to you. Will you please now Clap yourselves and those who are doing the wonderful work. And a little advert, if you want to get involved and you're not already doing it, talk to Gemma Leaning who's what 
is now classed as a PAM, a new technology term in the Legion, Popeel Appeal Manager. She's here today, do get involved, because a lot of us PAOs, and I'm one of them, we're getting a bit old of the tooth to do it. So we need the younger generation to take over from us. So that is a plea, please help out if you can. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to shut up for a while and everybody's going to cheer. <laughs> Once again, we are very fortunate to have the wonderful musical talents of our Swine's Ed band with us. You've heard them play while the standards have marched in. So let us now sit back and listen as we play under the conductorship of Mr John Lyons. gentlemen, um, Swine's Head Band, what can I say? Well, I can say, tell you this, um, before today, I make sure everything is happening smoothly. So I went to visit Swine's Head Band because they told me that they'd got a new musical director, or in normal terms, a conductor. And uh, so I went to Swine's Head Band practice, met the new uh, musical director, a, a very nice man, and I said, oh, I'm looking forward to you coming to East Kirby. I'm not coming. Which sort of baffled me to start off with. I said, oh, what are we going to do? It's all right, John Lyons is coming back. So we're very privileged again to have John Lyons with us, conducting the band, and uh, it was nice to see him. 
and uh, I wish him all the well in the future, what he's doing. And, uh, but ladies and gentlemen, Swine's Head Band. So if I could now call on one of my county officers, Pat Nicholas, our County Poppy Appeal Coordinator, to come forward and to assist our County President, Stroke Deputy Lord Lieutenant, to present some awards, please. And in case you wonder, ladies and gentlemen, that there is a missing face as well, on the platform. Sadly this week my county vice chairman suffered from a heart attack and he is now recovering uh, after having a pacemaker fitted and he sends his best wishes and says at least I've got out of sitting on the stage and looking serious. So we've got some awards to give ladies and gentlemen and these go to Poppy Appeal organisers within the county who we believe do a wonderful job. Sadly, um, the first award, the cup, hasn't come back because the gentleman who came who was supposed to bring it back has left it at home. But we will make sure that the winner gets it. The Jewelheimer Cup this year goes to Mrs Anne Wilkes, Collinsby and Tatchell Branch. The Shepherd Poppy Trophy goes to Mrs. Val Scally Immingham Branch. And I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, none of these people know that it's get, they're getting them. So that's probably why you're thinking they're taking a long time to come to the front. Because it would spoil the surprise if we told them in advance, wouldn't it? The Stella Willing Rose Bowl goes to Mrs. Debbie Reynolds, Gosperton and District Area. <laughs> Debbie not with us? Anybody from that area, Gosperton end here? No, she was due to be here today. Oh, is somebody waving? Come out and collect it for her then, would you please? If you can.
So ladies and gentlemen, there's a wonderful chap stood in front of me. He's our county president. He's also a deputy law lieutenant, but I class him as a very good friend. Ladies and gentlemen, our county president. Fellow veterans, wonderful people of Lincolnshire, and of course from across the United Kingdom and the world, I see uniforms from different countries here too. It's wonderful to see you all here uh, today. This is, for me, one of the highlights of, of the year. Uh, it never ceases to amaze me how many people uh, turn out for this wonderful uh, occasion. I always leave it to the last minute to prepare. Um, and and I, I was thinking this morning, you know, how do I get that balance? Because by nature I'm quite a light-hearted person. And, and somehow when I set off for this event, I, I, I think, gosh, I ought to be sombre. I ought to be sombre. That's the mood I should try to strike. So, you know, I don't rock up here with jokes and, and gags in, in, in my pocket. But I don't feel sombre either. I look forward to the event. I look forward to coming here and spending time with wonderful people who give their time for others in the service of others. Service before self. And it's so uplifting. It's rather like the petrol in the car. You know, we have to fill it up every now and again uh, to keep the car going. And for me, this is part of filling up the tank. Filling up the tank is spiritually uplifting, and I really, really look forward to it. And people often ask me, uh, do you miss the Royal Air Force? Now, I've been out of the Royal Air Force for at least 100 years. I'm that old. <laughs> and I, I have to say, I, I would echo what, what our county chairman said about the, the cadets, all of the cadets. Freudian, that, I'm afraid, because uh, I was an air cadet. And I served in the Royal Air Force. I was really proud of both of those, of those things. But we do look to the cadets. We look to them to serve uh, the country in whatever form that might, might take. And others, of course, uh, from across our, our great country. Um, and, and it's just a, a, a delight to see you. Um, and uh, I thought the uh, flight sergeant carrying the War Widows uh, standard was incredibly impressive. So very well done to you. Now, like John, I was quite tearful about Andy. I didn't know him anywhere near as well, and he, thought, he was in my thoughts and prayers dur during the week. And he was on my mind as I came here this morning. It's the fact that I, I always knew I would get a crack out of him when I walked into, into whatever building. He'd pull my leg about something or other. And I shall miss that, miss that deeply. And it's terrible to hear about all of those who are suffering uh, from uh, heart failure and, and, uh, and other things. Um, and do pass on our best, uh, please, uh, County Chairman, to Dave uh, for a speedy re recovery. Now, back, back to people ask me, uh, do I miss the Royal Air Force? Uh, I have to say, not really. Not, not really. I'm incredibly proud to have served in the Royal Air Force, and if you cut my arm off, there's probably a round or running through. But I don't really miss it. it, it you know, the uh, life was, was tough and, you know, my family moved an awful lot and to be away from them on operations was, was tricky. And you can see from my chest that I didn't spend an awful lot of time away from home because uh, I was uh, served mostly during the Cold War. But what I do miss, and I miss it deeply, is the sense of camaraderie. Wherever you serve, whether it's Cold War, mostly in, in Germany, for those of us that, that served during that, that time, whether it was in Afghanistan or in Iraq, in the Middle East, wherever we, we, we were serving, you could be guaranteed of camaraderie, and I miss that so, so much. And I've been out of the Royal Air Force for quite a long time now. I've worked in three sectors since. But it's always a delight to be around service people and their families, there's a connection, there's a sense of camaraderie. So today it was a, a particular joy, I have to say, and a complete surprise 
that a former station commander of, of mine uh, is here. Sorry, Ron, I am going to embarrass you ever so slightly. But it's on the sense of camaraderie. And he, he had the privilege, I'm sure he would say, of commanding RAF Waddington uh, here in this wonderful county of, of Lincolnshire. And I, and I had the great joy of, of uh, being one of his flight lieutenants. It was at least 100 years ago, Ron, I think, wasn't it? Um, the next time I saw him, I was actually a squadron leader, and he was uh, an Air Commodore, and we were serving together um, at Headquarters Strike Command uh, during Gulf War II. And it was a serious time, a serious time for our nation, uh, and a serious time for all those serving on operations uh, throughout the world at, at the time. But that sense of camaraderie, the sense of humor, the sense of joy at seeing someone after so many years, as if it were yesterday, but just a, a, and that instills pride. And that, I think that's, that's probably where I'm going to leave it today. I, I, I had one theme that I wanted to, 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 to leave us all with, really, um, more uplifting than humorous. But, but it's a sense of, of pride, not smugness, not self-satisfied, but, but actually pride, being proud in what we're doing, whether we're parading a standard, whether we're out selling poppies, or whether we're in the cadets and marching in smartly and having prepared our uniforms smartly uh, to show pride. And so I wanted to, to say thank you, re really. Thank you to everybody. Uh, thank you to the Air Cadets. Navy cadets, the sea cadets rather, and, and the uh, army cadets. Thank you to all who serve, all who serve in the armed forces and in the other uh, protective services, the police, the ambulance, the fire service, etc. You know, people who serve and put themselves before others, service before, before self. I wonder if you would just join me in a round of applause for those who are serving currently on operations throughout the world and their families. And then lastly, these sorts of events don't, don't just happen on their own. You heard our uh, county chairman was all over this um, and, and down on some of the numbers uh, for the committee too. Um, lots and lots of people come together to make this annual event so special. Um, and lots and lots of people are about to get really busy uh, raising funds for the Royal British Legion to spend on veterans, on serving personnel and on their families. So. Thank you to everybody who will be out raising funds uh, this year and, and uh, you know, last year we presented an award for someone that had been doing it for 50 years. How, how special was, was that? So to all of you, a massive uh, thank you. I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to being in market deeping Tesco's uh, for a couple of days uh, with my nine-year-old son who is really, really looking forward to it and he'll be there in his Cubs uniform. So thank you. That, that's really the message. Um, you should feel justifiably proud if you've served or if you have loved ones who have served uh, this magnificent country of, of ours. And I thank you all uh, from the bottom of my heart for that service. Thank you. He was feigning surprise. Yeah, no, thank you for re reminding me. I was going to do this um, earlier, and then I thought I would do it now. On the, on the subject of uh, service, now this isn't a, um, an award from the Royal British Legion. I'm sure that will come in due course. But this is recognition from someone who's asked not to be uh, named um, for our county uh, chairman. Um, and I think it's, it's really, really justified. 26 years um, as part of the Royal British Legion and five as our chair for the county of, of Lincolnshire and uh, hopefully many, many more. Um, so for you, from someone in the audience, there is a gift, county chairman.
you know, you can never trust anybody or anything in this job, but thank you very much, and it means a great deal. When I was talking to uh, Gary earlier, I joined the Legion because I believed in what the Legion stands for. My father was in the Royal Air Force, and in fact, I got nobbled by our local branch. They were looking for a new secretary. So I said, oh yeah, I'll come along, not like that. Quite happy. Within a fortnight, I'd become branch secretary. Then somebody said, why don't you try county committee? No, I don't want to do, no, 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 no. So I finished up on county committee. And then I must have gone to sleep, because my hand must have gone up when they said, we need a new county chairman. But I do appreciate this, but I don't do the job for me. I do it for you. The county president just says, there's two letters you, you obviously haven't got in your vocabulary. No. So, anyway, so that's sort of knocked me back a bit, but um, Craig Marshall, would you uh, prepare your standard bearers? So as we move into our act of remembrance, I would ask you, because some of you might know, and some of you might not, on the 26th of October, the UK forces ended combat operations in Hemrand, Afghanistan which had been a military presence since October 2001. Today, at the National Memorial Arboretum, the Royal British Legion is marking that event. Some of you have probably heard on the news that a lot of people don't recognise what happened in Afghanistan. But I believe we should. Some 150,000 British Armed Forces personnel served in Afghanistan and sadly 457 lost their lives. So as we now go into a moment of remembrance, on this day we come together from different parts of our great county from many walks of life. We are truly a mixture of ages and we all have our own beliefs in what this world now delivers us each day. However, we come together for one common cause, to acknowledge the need of what the poppy peeler is all about and what it truly stands for, how it can help in some way those who might need help and true salvation for what they have given to their fellow humans. Yesterday, today, tomorrow and for the years to come. So let us take time in prayer to remember those we know of but also to those many that are still unnamed. Let us pray. Let us all take time in our busy lives to stop and grasp the need of love and peace. That we may challenge what is wrong and support full wholeheartedly that which is right. Let us take on board our faults and mistakes. We can do this if we try in making the world we share with, which we share with others, one that we would want to live in and be there for future generations to come. Amen. 
If you are able, would you please stand? And you should have a hymn sheet with a hymn, God is our strength and refuge, and I'm sure you will recognise the tune when the band starts playing it. Take, being careful at all times. Let us share together a world of love, peace, gentleness, meekness, and be able to forgive when it is needed. Amen. In your journeys to and fro, be directed. In your happiness and pleasure, find joy. In care, anxiety, or trouble, be sustained. In peril or danger, May God protect each one of us. Amen. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them.
tomorrow they gave there today please be seated ladies and gentlemen So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure a lot of you have all been sat out there thinking, who's the lady sat next to the county president? We all know the lady at the very end. That's our, one of my county officers, Marilyn Jones, who's been deputising for Dave Tyler. And please don't tell Dave this, but she's a lot more attractive. But seriously, ladies and gentlemen, this now gives me the greatest of pleasure to introduce our guest speaker. I'm not going to tell you a lot about her, only that her name is Jenny Green, OBE, and I'm going to leave it to her to tell you all about her, what she's up to, and why she's come today. indeed. I have to say that I'm rather overwhelmed to be standing here in front of this fantastic gathering of veterans, friends, colleagues and members of the Royal British Legion and members of the War Widows Association. Looking at all the standards, the cadets, I have to say it's almost as splendid as the Festival of Remembrance in the Albert Hall. It is a wonderful turnout. I have been asked to come and speak to you representing the War Widows Association of Great Britain, of which I am a past chairman. But my involvement with Lincolnshire goes back a long way. In 1971, my husband had his first proper job in the RAF as an instructor at RAF Cranwell and we bought our first home. We were too young for quarters. We'd married at university, and we bought a very small little house in Lessingham in 1971. 1971 is a year I'll mention again in a minute. After that, during the time here, I taught in Sleaford, and then many years later, I was a non-executive director of the Community and Mental Health Trust in Lincolnshire, and then from 2000 to 2006, I was chairman of United Lincolnshire Hospitals. So driving here today was really a trip down memory lane, as I live in Stamford, and so I crossed over many familiar roads to get here today, and so I am delighted to be here. Perhaps more pertinently, 34 years ago, not very far from here, in fact, as the crow flies very close to here, my husband, Group Captain Bill Green, who was about to deploy to Gulf One as the Tornado Detachment Commander, was killed in the North Sea. So it is particularly poignant for me to stand here on this occasion so very close to where that tragedy happened. On that night, my life changed forever. I hadn't heard much about the War Widows Association. Of course, we all knew about the Royal British Legion, 
but I suddenly found myself eligible to be a member of the War Widows Association. It's not an association that anybody wants to join. None of us want to be eligible to join it. But I have to say that having been thrown into that world, I've been very proud to be a member of it. And very proud of the work that it does for its members over many years. I think it has a lot of respect as an organization, but it's not nearly as well it's not as old as the Royal British Legion, and it's not nearly as well known and loved, perhaps, as the Royal British Legion. I mentioned a minute ago that 1971, and it was only in 1971 that the beginnings of the association were formed. A lady called Laura Connolly, who moved back to England from living in Australia for a while, was a war widow, and she was horrified to discover that her war widow's pension was taxed. Being quite a feisty lady, and I have to say that the older generation of war widows were incredibly feisty old ladies. You never wanted to get between a war widow and the buffet. Never. <laughs> never. <coughs> But Laura Connolly decided to go on a protest and not pay her tax. And this story was picked up by the Daily Express, I think it was. And some other war widows thought, actually, we don't like paying our tax either, and it's all wrong. And so they got together in a Lion's Tea Shop. Those of us of a certain generation will remember Lion's Tea Shops. And I'm sorry, cadets, you probably have never heard of them. But from that humble meeting, the War Widows Association was formed, and it was formed as a pressure group. And it remains to today to be a campaigning pressure group to improve the life and the pensions of war widows, and it's still campaigning. Now, you would think <coughs> that that wasn't necessary. Surely, any government, any country, would want to honour and respect its war widows and treat them with a certain degree of decency. Sadly, not so. And I'm going to read you something now because I don't want to get any of these words wrong. Because this is actually from a proper government document. The Ministry of Pensions was set up in 1916 to administer payments to deserving war widows. The widows were assessed by a special grants committee to determine if they were worthy of state support. This assessment took into account their moral character, any relationships with men other than close family who could potentially be expected to provide for them, the quality of their housekeeping and where relevant, the quality of their parenting. Pensions would be revoked should any evidence come to light that these standards were not being maintained. However, the pension rate was so low that widows often had to work anyway, and this took its toll on the quality of their housekeeping and the quality of their parenting. They couldn't be at home all the time. So given that there was evidence of falling standards, neighborhood gossip was often the source of pensions being revoked. It was not unusual for them to have their pensions taken away. As well as this, pensions would certainly be taken away if a widow remarried or entered a relationship with another man he would be expected to provide for her and her children. Times were not great in the country, and in 1925, during a period of austerity, widows' pensions were restricted further. If you didn't have any children under 16, you were no longer eligible anyway for a pension. Then, during the second 
Second World War, and I do hope the Chancellor's not listening at all, the rate of tax on the widow's pension was increased to 50%. This was the highest rate of taxation in the country because that pension was classed as unearned income. So the fight then was important to get this pension taken off, and it was done in two steps. Firstly, it was halved, and then in 1979 it was removed. So you can see that it was necessary to form this association. And indeed, over the years, I personally have been very involved in campaigning and fighting for improvements in pensions, in particular, so that widows could remarry and not have their pensions taken away. We did manage to get legislation changed on several occasions. And one particular notable success, which actually ended up in the High Court, but we had a success against the Ministry of Defence in this, was when we joined forces and worked very closely with the Royal British Legion. There was a gentleman who was head of pensions and compensation who was called Mr. James Bond. Now some of you may know him and know that I'm telling the truth, but his name really was Mr. James Bond. And he was fantastic at helping us fight this with the tenacity that was required. And the Cheryl Hume case has gone down as legislation and is still referred to. Not always with a smile on their face, I might say. But the relationship with the Royal British Legion and the War Widows goes <coughs> way beyond pensions. The War Widows Association doesn't have any paid workers. Everybody's a volunteer. We don't have any officers. People work from their kitchen tables. And so the Royal British Legion have been extremely generous and kind in letting the association use their meeting rooms to have our meetings and to get togethers. And that has been going on for many, many years. And so we're very, very grateful to them. They also offer us access to their professionals for advice and support when needed. And for many years, the Royal British Legion have administered the War Widows Rail Card. You'd think this was really not too difficult a thing, but I can assure you that they have had to deal with many people applying for War Widows Rail Cards who were not eligible, and they've had to deal with that very tactfully and very efficiently for those that were eligible. And we've been extremely grateful to that. Then. I know that the Royal British Legion are very supportive of a lot of charities. For many years, I was on the board of Combat Stress and I'm a life vice president of that association and know how much the Royal British Legion have helped with providing welfare support and working together with the veterans who need that sort of emotional support for their PTSD and for their families as well. I am a great fan of the Royal British Legion. I was also a trustee of the Armed Forces Memorial, and I know that the Royal British Legion have taken that over and managed to maintain it to a standard that we as trustees would never have been able to do. So it's nice that today there is an event taking place over there. I know the bikers have been wonderful in going and supporting events at the National Memorial Arboretum and at the Armed Forces Memorial. And so, again, I have personal involvement as how the Royal British Legion works and supports other charities. Remembrance is a very important part of the War Widows Association. And as well as capturing personal stories, we do take part in the remembrance services. It may surprise you to know that until 1982, the War Widows were not allowed to be part of the Sunday muster. So we couldn't join the march past the Cenotaph until 1982. But before that, the widows wanted to do something, and they wanted to lay their own tribute, which is a cross of white carnation, uh, chrysanthemums, I'm sorry, white chrysanthemums at the Cenotaph. And they were allowed to do that on the Saturday. But to begin with, the traffic wasn't stopped, 
so ladies had to dash in between the cars and the lorries and pop their cross at the cenotaph and then dash back again. In my day, they were able to close off one lane and so we could actually have a little bit there by the side with the buses going past as we were trying to say prayers and things like that and the traffic passing. Now, it's in the calendar as a proper event. It is a lovely event. A lot of people, a lot of tourists come and watch. What started off is one lone piper. We now must have about 40 or 50 pipers come along. And we have a band from Aria Holton. And it really is a very special occasion. But we still join in with the muster now on the Sunday. We do both, and we're grateful to the Royal British Legion for that. We've said, both speakers before me have talked about the cadets and the youth of today who are going to be the people that support veterans and support the veteran community and their families going forward. My son was a cadet, I have a grandson who's a cadet, so I know a little bit about what you're doing and I'm very impressed at how beautifully turned out you all are today, so thank you. All the military associations, and I've been part of a few over the years, we're all suffering from a decline in numbers as the World War II generation sadly pass on. But we all get new members coming in. We have, sadly, new war widows every year coming and being eligible and joining us. And I know that the Royal British Legion has lots of younger members too. It is so important that we all respect these younger members. Their needs are slightly different. The way of communicating with them is very different from how we do with our older members, perhaps. But they are the future. And it is so important that as well as looking after the veterans of yesterday, the veterans of today, we're all in a position to look after the veterans of tomorrow. So please, as we launch this poppy appeal, can I urge you all to give generously and support this fantastic work that the Royal British Legion does, not only as a legion, but supporting so many other ex-service charities to help them support their members too. I just quickly want to finish that I must acknowledge the gentleman sitting on the right, who the Deputy Lord Lieutenant has spoken about, I remarried Ron six years ago, and he didn't really expect to be singled out on this occasion. But <laughs> as the Deputy Lord Lieutenant said, he was so excited to see somebody he knew from way back over there. So I've been lucky to be able to rebuild a life, and I know many others have too. But thank you all very much indeed, and it's been a real privilege and honor to be here today. a bit of a, an eye-opener, ladies and gentlemen. We shouldn't talk politics, but I think if a lot of the politicians got off the backside and did a lot more, we wouldn't be in the state where we are in. But, uh, that's for me to think about and you to consider. <laughs> I've got a county, another county up on one of my county officers, Claire Law. It's going to come across, Jenny, just a little thank you for coming. And you might get a little bit wrong if you're lucky. <laughs> so while we've all been doing what we've been doing, ladies and gentlemen, the raffle uh, team have been busy making sure that uh, everything's been counted, worked out, and an independent person has drawn the raffle tickets. So I'm going to announce with just Jane Lyne, Chris Lake.
Well, and Chris is a present serving in the Royal Air Force. And for those of you who did serve in the Royal Air Force, keep away from him because he's a snowdrop. <laughs> Once again, we could not have undertaken what we have done today without our dear friends, the Pantom family, providing us with a, such a marvellous venue. Would you please say thank you to the Pantom family and all the staff here at East Coast. Quite often, when you want to have a guest speaker, you get somebody who is so boring and so miserable, you all go to sleep. But today, ladies and gentlemen, I think our eyes have been opened more about the War Widows Association. Will you please give your thanks to Jenny? No event or parade works unless you've got a band. Ladies and gentlemen, Swine's Head Silver Band under the directorship of Mr John Lyons. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got a group of girls in the corner selling raffle tickets and we've got the poppy ladies next door. Thank you very much for turning out and doing that small job for us. You have seen wandering round a very tall chap and he's been the voice at the start of the show. Uh, that was Julian Cousins who provides all the sound equipment and he's been supported this year by Air Cadets taking photographs. So I just want to say, Julian, wherever you are, make sure you've got my good side. <laughs> but thank you very much. I've often said, and I'll say it today, there's no I in county, there's no I in branch. We are a team working together. So, to my county team and to my county president, thank you. And it would be really boring if I was stood here looking at an empty room. So to you all for coming and making today so special and making the sunshine outside, it makes a difference. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tomorrow's generation, the cadets that are here today, you are a credit to the uniforms you are wearing, your families, your communities and to the service that you are represented. Thank you very, very much. And our wonderful association standard bearers who are flanking you today, ladies and gentlemen, without them representing many organisations that are sadly now going by the board. I thank you, seriously, from the bottom of my heart. There is a term in the Royal British Legion called ceremonial, and without being correct with ceremonial, everything would be an absolute chaos. So I am very, very fortunate as a county chairman to have my county parade marshal, Alan Cannon, today, supported by parade marshal, Gary Sapstead. I'll say it many times, ladies and gentlemen, 
I don't believe any standard bearer should turn up out at an event and be used for two minutes. We are very, very honoured in Lincolnshire and we do have a reputation of having the best, the most professional, the most smart, dedicated Legion standard bearers. So, as we come to an end, Parade Marshal, will you get ready please? Ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the end of today's launch. For those of you who have got your diaries with you, or when you get home and you've got your calendars, please put down Lincolnshire Poppy Appeal Launch 2025 will be here in this wonderful venue on Saturday the 25th of October. Don't miss it, it'll be worth it because next year is 80 years anniversary since VE Day and VJ Day. Would you please stand? Ray Marshall, march off the parade.
will be a photo call of the standard bearers in front of Just Jane outside nearly immediately. But if you want any individual photos, please feel free to ask. But please, 